Welcome back guys. If you have been following along with this build, then you know the last Cayman engine video I filmed was a disaster. Everything that I did uh, as far as getting the crankshaft into the crank carrier was good. I installed the oil squirters, which I had already done off camera. Uh, we made sure that all the correct clearances for oil were on the bearings, got the crankshaft installed, happy days. Every single thing I did after getting the crank in the crank carrier was wrong. And on top of it, at the end of the video, the IMS chain wouldn't fit on the IMS shaft. So needless to say, I was left uh, frustrated and confused. Uh, I posted the video all over Facebook like I normally do to the Cayman groups, and I found a new group that's specifically for building M96, M97 engines. I explained some of my woes in there, and uh, Jake Raby from Flat Six Innovations came to my rescue. He messaged me and explained what was going on with the IMS shaft. I actually had an, uh, an IMS shaft from an early engine, so I had to order a new, well, new to me, IMS. Uh, I like to call it the IMS shaft, even though IMS stands for Intermediate Shaft. I'm gonna keep calling it the IMS shaft. There's nothing you can do about it. Jake also suggested that I get a new chain for the IMS shaft. Uh, regardless of what the factory service manual says, he said to go ahead and get a new one, so that's what we did. On top of that, and the reason that I'm so much more comfortable today making this video than I was the last video, uh, Jake introduced me to a couple of things from the Knowledge Group, uh, is the name of the company, and basically it is a full DVD set that literally goes step by step by step by step and shows you exactly how to build the engine. Basically the whole first DVD was over everything that I'm doing right now. I was able to throw it on, take notes, I could have thrown it on like right now as I'm building the engine and followed it. Um, I'm gonna do a complete review of this thing once I finish the engine build and have seen the entire DVD series, but so far it's been super, super helpful. And on top of that, uh, I also got uh, their torque specification book. So now that we actually have the uh, information that we need to make this work and make it work right, I'm really excited. Uh, the factory service manual just did not work well for this type of build. That's it, that's your update. We're gonna get to work, and the very first thing we're gonna do with the crank already in the carrier and everything torqued down is actually install the bank two connecting rods. You can see here, I have labeled 654, and that's where the connecting rods are gonna go. With my oil clearances already taken care of, we'll go ahead and put some assembly lube on these bearings and drop these rods in. The manufacturer on these rods, which is Carrillo, suggests 40 foot-pounds on these rod bolts, and that's what we're going to set them to. Two more. That's it. Bank two connecting rods are in place. Now we need to flip the crank carrier over so we can start working on the windage tray and all of the IMS stuff. Oh man, these things are heavy. Installation of the windage tray is pretty cut and dry. Uh, just make sure that these tabs right here on the back of the windage tray go into these holes. It will go on like this, but it doesn't sit flat. So make sure it's sitting flat. Install and torque your bolts. I already have these gaskets installed on the windage tray. So now we get to drop in the IMS. Actually, you know what? This being a used IMS, I wanna go ahead and pull this IMS bearing off. I mean, obviously I'm gonna replace it, but uh, I don't know what kind of contaminants or anything are in it, so I don't even want it in this engine install right now. So I'm gonna pull this off, clean the rest of this up, and then drop it in. This episode is sponsored by Flat Six Motorsports. Flat Six Motorsports is your one-stop shop for aftermarket performance parts for your late model Porsche. For example, we can hop in here and look for 718 exhaust, and of course we're going to look for Soul because we love Soul so much on our 987. 
Uh, and speaking of the 987, if you go to the intake page on here and you look at the IPD plenum, what else do you find but the Boost Brothers Garage install video? Thanks a bunch to our sponsor, Flat Six. Make sure you go check out their website if you need any aftermarket parts for your Porsche. I am really glad I did that because inside here behind that bearing, this entire shaft was full of old engine oil. If you're doing this job, make sure you remove the IMS bearing. I went ahead and dropped the shaft in and now I need to put the uh, cylinder head, the uh, camshaft timing chains on first and then we'll do the IMS chain. Timing chain's on, I can go ahead and install the IMS chain, which actually fits this time, which is awesome, as well as install the tensioners. When installing this tensioner, you want to lubricate this uh, for the sake of transparency. This is actually still a little bit of a mock-up for me, and that's because I found out that well, I have a bit of a bastard engine. So these engines come in three chain and five chain varieties. Because of the way that this whole thing went down and this was a Motormeister engine that sat forever and then the guy went and picked it up and then multiple people have worked on it and parts have gone across the country multiple times. Somehow I have the crank carrier and crankshaft from a 3.6 and the rest of the engine is from 3.4. After talking to Jake Raby, who again has just been an absolutely massive help, I, I can't thank him enough, um, but after further discussing this with him, he said we can make it work, but there are some things that we have to make sure of. With the additional stroke on this engine, we need to make sure that the oil control rings uh, don't come down too far into the bore and actually break the rings. So what I'm doing right now is loosely fitting these tensioners. I'm not lubricating everything yet. I'm gonna bolt this into the engine. I'm gonna show you guys just like how you would do it. Um, so you have that information. However, this isn't the end all be all installation for me. And this is what the assembled crank carrier looks like. So you've got your IMS chain, you've got your tensioners all installed, you've got your timing chains on, you've got the crank carrier with the crank in, you've got bank two rods in, your windage tray, the IMS shaft, timing chain, and yeah, 75 pounds of awesomeness I've got to drop into this engine block over here. This crank carrier is uh, a little heavier than last time and I don't have any help, so wish me luck. Also, Unlike my incorrect assumption in the last video, you actually do not use any sealer between the crank carrier and the case half. Looks good. This is the point at which I was trying to get to today. I am going to go ahead and fasten this from the bottom. Uh, there are two bolts that are the permanent bolts that go in and then on the other end you actually use two cylinder heads or I'm sorry two cylinder head bolts because those go all the way through the block into the crank carrier and there's this Porsche special tool 9613 I think they're Delrin sleeves that are the height of the cylinder head and you put those on and that uh, allows you to use those long cylinder head bolts. Another tip that Jake told me about is you can actually use piston wrist pins as those spacers instead of that special Porsche tool. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and install a uh, piston and rod for bank one to check and make sure that I don't have too much stroke. And then next time you see this build, we'll be installing those permanently. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.